Welcome back to Market Call. We're here with David Burroughs. We're talking North American large caps. I want to start with an email from Thomas in Aurora. His subject is Sun Life. Please comment on SLF. So I think that the issue with Sun Life is that it's seen really today as a company with a lot of exposure to wealth management. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, anything with uh, uh, a touch point to wealth management going through end of December, January, early February was going to have difficulty in a weak market, macro concerns. Um, I think in general, Sun Life is doing a good job in building their business. Um, they obviously took a shot in early January, uh, but our work on the macro level is that money is now rotating back into equities. We watch the percentage of stocks in a market that have long-term upward price trends and breadth is expanding in North American markets, Canadian markets, actually most markets around the world. And so if your view is constructive on markets, then your view on wealth management related companies should be there as well. So I think that there are others that I might focus on first, but I think that Sun Life is probably okay here going forward. All right, we're going to go to a call. John in Point Pelee, Ontario. John, what's your question? Uh, thanks for taking my call, Greg. I never miss David Burroughs. I'd like to ask David about the health of the Canadian bank going forward and what would his favorite pick be, and does he own any of them? And under the guise of stock markets for dummies, if all the banks swim together, why is there a $45 difference between CIBC and TD? Thanks, Jen. <laughs> well, John, let's, let's start with the first one. Uh, on the Canadian banks. So interestingly, the Canadian banks are all quite different and some are, have better uh, setups and, than others. And so when we look at it, first of all, as a group, you know, their capital is in good shape. Uh, they don't have major problems right now with loan losses. Could loan losses go up and could, could they be writing down some value over time? You know, if oil stays below $40, uh, then it's going to get tougher and you'll see more headwinds. Canadian banks probably will grow their earnings at uh, sort of 2 to 3 percent going forward over the next couple of years given the headwinds in the Canadian economy. So maybe there's better banks to focus on. I'd prefer to look at some of the things in the U.S. Uh, than in Canada. The U.S., the economy, the delta is getting a little better. In Canada, I think the delta or the change is getting a little bit worse. Then, in those terms, do you think of a bank perhaps with more U.S. exposure, like TD being different than the group, or Scotiabank with the Latin American exposure? That, that, that's, that's a great question. So our view is that uh, emerging markets are likely to continue under pressure with relatively low commodity prices. So probably Scotia would not be our first choice. Uh, if I had to choose one, and we do own a little bit, uh, I'd focus on TD for the reason that, first of all, they don't have huge capital markets exposure in Canada. Uh, they don't have uh, a lot of Western exposure. Uh, and they've got good U.S. East Coast exposure. And so we like all of that. <clears throat> so my focus would be in something like TD or perhaps Commerce, uh, less interested in RBC, uh, National, or, uh, or uh, Scotia. Okay, we have Mark in Vaughan on the line. Mark, what's your question? I, um, my question is on Concordia. Um, December 18th, they came out and they they paid they paid back 45 million of 180 million on secured uh, bridge loan. Uh, Mark Thompson was on your program and also said that they look at six six dollars and seventy cents U.S. and over a billion dollars for this coming year. I just want to know uh, is it what happened with Zion today? They're painting all these um, companies with the same brush. Well, Mark, it's a, it's a good question, and you know, when we look at making our investments at Barometer, the first question is, how are we with the market, and do we have the wind at our back? And I would say the answer is yes, both in Canada and the U.S. The second question is, which sectors do we want to focus on? Where is money getting put to work? Where is money leaving? And, and interestingly, in sort of October, November, healthcare came under pressure, and it really hasn't stopped since then. If I look across the spectrum of healthcare companies, whether you're looking at pharmaceutical or biotech, uh, in many cases managed health care, money seems to be leaving those groups in favor of other sectors. So this is a, an area that I'd be careful of. I think that the next piece of that is at the company level, the companies that have been building through acquisition are under pressure. You know, and Valiant is a good example of that. So I think that at this point there's probably much better places to focus. If I had to be somewhere within uh, health care, I would be in health care devices. You know, you could look at the ETF IHI which is healthcare devices. And there's a number of companies within that space that are behaving quite well. But I think that I would sort of stay clear right now of Concordia. 
All right, we're going to be back with more with David Burroughs, President and Chief Investment Strategist at Barometer Capital. He's answering your questions about North American large caps. So give us a call. It's all free, 1-855-326-6266.